Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to IMPACT. Each week we bring you information about exciting things that are happening in our community, and today will be no different. The holiday season always presents us with an awesome opportunity to think about a lot of things. And even especially as we approach the new year, lots of people start talking about New Year's resolutions, changing their lifestyle. And one of the things that they focus on is eating, nutrition, and other kinds of things related to diet and exercise. Well, today we're going to be talking with a very special guest about all of the wonderful ways that we can eat better, not just in this holiday season, but also in the years to come. We're not going to limit it to just next year. We want you to really think about the impact of changing your nutritional lifestyle can have on your life. This book is called Cooking Up Good Health, a recipe collection. And the author of that book is Donna Green Goodman. And I welcome Donna Green Goodman to this broadcast for the first time. And with the spread that you've bought, it won't be the last time. I Yay. guarantee you that. So yeah. welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. And you're the owner of a business, a health management business called I do. Still Shouting. Still Shouting is the name of the business. Came out of my experience with breast cancer, the first book that I wrote, Something to Shout About. And um, I decided that that would be the name of my health ed consulting business. Well, you know, you really do have a great story. And when I say great, it's not because it's a good thing, but it's a story that really demonstrates so many different things in terms of uh, lifestyle and the adjustments that we can make and the impact that can have on our life. And the fact that just because you may have dietary restrictions or you have a desire to eat healthier, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a bland existence. And so we're going to learn a lot about that today. And like I said, you brought some goodies here for us to look at and perhaps even taste. Yeah, we're going to taste them too. No restrictions? No restrictions. All you, right. Everything is, is here for you. Um, I, I've already passed the uh, men at my home. <laughs> it was hard getting out the door, but <laughs> we're good. But they let you go anyway. They let me go. Tell us just a little bit about your own personal story. You talked about the book Still Shouting and how that book talked about your life. Yes, I was diagnosed with aggressive metastatic invasive breast cancer in 1996, told I had two to five years to live, and was told that I needed chemo, radiation, stem cell, more chemo, and tamoxifen. And because I'm a health educator, I had just worked at Morehouse School of Medicine in a cancer prevention project, so it was really ironic for me. And I knew that there were some things lifestyle that could affect chronic disease, and so I just Decided to do radiation and to change my lifestyle and because of the book that I've written both of them a lot of the emphasis is on the diet piece which is a big piece but I also changed how I lived how I worked um, got rid of some stressful relationships I deepened my relationship with God um, I my exercise changed I was going to the gym every day and I started to do more outside exercises I started going to bed earlier because um, I'd be up to one o'clock, you know, eating chips, drinking soda, watching movies. And I started to go to bed between 9, 9.30 every night. And that gets me up earlier in the morning. And the breast cancer is gone, has been gone since 96. Mm. But so many other things that I was experiencing also were addressed by making lifestyle changes. You know, sometimes when people face a crisis in life, mm -hmm. and it requires them to really think about making these kinds of changes. Sometimes the change is so overwhelming that some people decide I'm just not going to even be bothered with it. Uh, sometimes people do try mm -hmm. and they try and they try again. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are all kinds of different ways that people approach these kinds of challenges. You've had great success over the years with the changes that you've made. And one of the more significant areas has been in the area of nutrition. Mm -hmm. Uh, people won't know this, but I will be the witness. What? Donna is one of the best cooks <laughs> on the planet. And usually, you don't know this, but I'm usually referencing you when I'm eating somewhere. <laughs> as a standard. And uh, Yeah, yeah, as a, as, a, as a standard. Wow. And, and what I'm saying is that people will say, they'll see me eating something, it's a vegetarian dish. And mm -hmm. I'll say, oh, yeah, this is good. But <laughs> I have a friend that would make you forget about eating meat or forget that you're eating something that is meat-based because it tastes so good. You just can't tell the difference. And they'll quickly say, oh yeah, I can tell the difference. And I say, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's a traditional kind of thing where people think that if it's not something I'm used to, right. that it's gonna be bland, right. it's gonna be something that doesn't taste very right. good, and it's something I'm just gonna absolutely hate. Right. But you have actually mastered the art of preparation uh, for healthy meals. And just before we went in the air, we were both beefing about the idea that, no pun intended, right, by the way. Right, but it's the truth. Uh, but we were beefing about the idea that, you know, seven years ago, I gave up beef and chicken. Mm -hmm. 
lifestyle. I was turning 50 and I said, I'm going to make some changes because going forward, this is my life. Mm -hmm. And so I really embraced the nutritional thing fully. Mm -hmm. I said, if I eliminate that, that's going to be a big plus for me. Well, everywhere I go, everywhere. Ev everywhere, people think that because I don't eat beef and chicken and I'm at an event, that I'm going to get the asparagus beers, I'm going to get the portobello mushroom, and I'm going to get that breaded thing with all of the vegetables, every vegetable that you can think of just stuffed into it. And they think they've satisfied the vegetarian in me. And, and it's usually not even seasoned well. <laughs> it's definitely not seasoned well. And you talk about bland. Right. I mean, that's what's bland. Right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how people that are thinking about making such changes in life, because these are good things to do, can move towards it in such a way that it's non-threatening and satisfactory for them. Talk to people just briefly before we start looking at what you have on this table. Talk to people who may be thinking about making a change and may have a fear of that because they don't quite know what to do. They don't know where to begin. They think they've got to give up everything right away. Just talk to people because you're a health educator. What do you say to people when they say, I want to eat better, I want to improve my nutrition? What, what do you start out by saying to people? In my particular case, as a breast cancer patient, it was life or death for me. And over the last 20 years, I've worked with a lot of people who perhaps are diabetic, about to get a leg cut off, whose cancer has come back, who may have asthma or something like that. And usually those people are a little more motivated to um, go without, to, to, to just go right at it. Other people not as motivated, I will often tell them that the secret is that you don't want to sacrifice flavor. Mm. And if you can decide how to cook with herbs and other spices and seasonings that give you the same flavor, then pretty much you're gonna be able to do it. Um, when, when you're in the South and you're making pinto beans or collards or kale or cabbage, there's a smoke flavor that's in there usually from the pork. And a lot of people will go from the pork and, to, and use turkey wings. Well, if you don't wanna put any of that in to reduce your, your consumption of cholesterol, you can use smoke flavoring, which will give you the same flavor. You can use um, coconut oil or some vegetable oils that have the same texture to it. A, a friend emailed me and said that she was gonna put more of this vegetable shortening in because it coated her greens the way she was used to eating it if it had fat back in there. Mm. So there are little things like that. You can stop eating junk foods. That's really easy to do. And the money that you save from the amount that you would spend on that, use that to spend on something that's a little healthier, tennis shoes, socks, a, a gym membership. You'd be amazed if you're buying the, the bag of chips and it's $3.49 a bag and you're buying three of those a week, we're talking $40 a month mm. that you would now have in your pocket mm. to either go with healthier food or to go for something else. Um, eat more plant foods, which are a lot more filling because a lot of us are used to eating fast food and a lot of animal products and they taste good, but they're not as filling for us and then they can contribute to other conditions that we have. Find someone who wants to eat healthy with you. Mm, a partner thing. Yeah, 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 because when, when you are accountable to someone yeah. and if you can find someone who can cook, mm. that's even greater. Mm -hmm. um, don't eat out as often. Mm because um, you can save a lot there. And if you are going to continue to eat out because of the nature of your job or something, then whatever they bring to you, you want to eat half of it because mm -hmm. the serving sizes that we get in America now are two to three times what wow. dietitians and nutritionists recommend. I mean, a serving of greens or cabbage is only a half a cup. Wow. And, and the actual serving of a meat can fit inside the side of the palm of your hand, which wow. is two to three ounces. Wow. But what you get when you go to a restaurant is three or four times that. Wow. So eat half of it, take the other half home with you, and eat that for lunch the next day or if you're with that partner split the meal so that you're not eating as many calories there are a lot of simple things that can be done and I think like you said people are overwhelmed because they think they have to do everything at the same time sure. and any little change that you could make is going to be a benefit you know and when you think about it there are, the, are all these things that people can do mm -hmm. out there it's like this big buffet list mm -hmm. of things that people can choose from and it's interesting too because when we start thinking about okay I'd like to make a change, but I'm going to make a change one day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then one day becomes a year. And we think about the South. And the South is a cauldron for all kinds of diseases. Heart, I mean, the highest rates in the nation. Heart disease, diabetes, stroke, all of these different lifestyle-related things right. 
that like you're saying, if people would spend a little more time making decisions. Little changes. Little, little changes. Things. Because as a health educator, the thing that amazes me so much, in the South, we're eating beans and rice and peas and cabbage and corn. We're farmers. If we don't farm, we can go to the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. But what we put in the food is what causes us to increase our risk for lifestyle diseases. Wow. So if we can make those sorts of switches and teach our body 21 days, a new habit is formed, all of the, the, the pathways in your brain change, your taste buds change. And the amazing thing for me when I worked in Atlanta was to, to teach people how to make these changes watch them make the changes, and they start to see the benefit. Because for me, breast cancer was what I went in there for. Mm. But as I started to make these changes, my migraines went away, mm. I lost weight, mm. constipation went mm. away, and my, one of the subjects that I talk about on another show that I do is the sex just improved. Mm. And for so many men who are diabetic or hypertensive, there's the, 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 the consequence or, um, of impotence. And if we can talk about that for real, mm. and usually when we have that conversation with a group of men, you know, they're rolling their eyes, I need to eat my whatever. But as soon as impotence and everybody's ears perked up, kind of perk up the right. ears perked up, <laughs> and then we explained how if the blood vessels are blocked, blood can't get where it's supposed to go. Mm. But if the eating the way that we're suggesting is going to reverse that, and that's what Bill Clinton did with his diet, mm. then everybody's happy all the time. Yeah. So it's not just, I want to eat this because I know it's better, but literally, I'm having a problem and I want to reverse this problem. And if this can help that, I'm willing to do it. You know, they say time flies when you're having a good time. Yes. We're having such a great time. We're already halfway through the broadcast. Okay. So I want to spend a little time and just kind of find out what you got on the table here because there's some good looking stuff here. Okay. And I, uh, I didn't eat lunch today because okay. I knew that you were coming. All right. And uh, figured I'd uh, figure out what's going on. Well, get your plate there. All right. Um, <clears throat> as you know, what I did was to go to a totally plant-based diet after mm -hmm. my diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And that is often a real challenge for people because they don't think that it's going to be good at all. And I believe that if you make it taste good, it's going to be really great. So what I decided to do was to just choose a number of things that we would normally have during the holiday time. Mm -hmm. Some of these things can can go over into the rest of the year as well, but they're all plant-based and they're all very good. So we'll start down here and work our way. And you know, I'm already impressed because nothing looks weird. Nothing well, it looks... shouldn't, and that's the thing you and I were talking about before we went on air. When you go to a party and you say you're eating healthy or you're vegan or vegetarian or you're gluten-free or something, they have this little table that nobody <laughs> wants to go to, and I'm thinking, who would want to be bothered with that? Right. But if you, if you take traditional recipes and add healthy ingredients to mm -hmm. them, then everybody can eat it. And in my community, a lot of times, people who, who don't eat healthy see what I've made that's healthy, mm -hmm. and they end up eating all of mine <laughs> and some of theirs too. <laughs> so what I decided to do was just something really simple here. Mm -hmm. These are just whole grain crackers that have nuts and seeds in them. Okay. I took whole grain bread. You can get that from your local grocery store. Mm -hmm. And I took... Um, um, healthy margarine and I flavored it with um, garlic and onion powder and Italian seasoning mm. and I think that would be good for a buffet. What you have here, I just threw this together today, a pastry that is full of spinach mm. and mushrooms and onions and bell peppers and I seasoned that. And then at the end, this is a new product that I found in the market which is a non-dairy Cheez-It. Wow. Yeah. Because we, we gave up cheese in our family, and we missed it so. Wow. So I've been, I almost ate the whole box before I got it home the first day. So take whatever you want yeah, from gonna there. Yeah, I'm going to definitely try one of these uh, because you said it had lots of onion powder. Onion, and... garlic, Italian seasoning. Mm. And, and sometimes for the healthy person in your life, just get them whole grain bread. Mm. And put the same spread on theirs that mm. you're putting on yours, mm -hmm. but they would prefer the whole grain bread, and that's all I got. This is very good, by the way. Good. Next, we have a relish that is very simple and easy to make. Frozen blueberries, cranberries, mm. strawberries, pineapple, raspberries, and I put coconut in it. Mm. And mm. if you can buy the store brand if you want to, or during the summertime, which is what I like to do, I freeze all of the stuff so that I can make it myself. Mm -hmm. My husband made it a couple weeks ago, took it to his job, and they were like, what? You made this? Mm -hmm. Can't believe it. So that's really easy, too. All right. I want to try a little bit of that. Okay. And should I just uh, grab my fork here? And, yeah. Go, oh, oh you got a little smoke there. Yeah, just get in here, and that looks, ooh, that looks good. Mm. And if you make it during the summertime, you can actually make it ahead, mm -hmm. mix everything together, and freeze it so that when it comes time, you can just thaw it and serve it. Um, and you can also add nuts to it if you want nuts. Next, we have some chocolate chip cookies. Mm. 
made without eggs, mm. and I use whole grain flour. And then because chocolate has some um, good benefits in it to help the body, but it also has caffeine in it, and caffeine affects the central nervous system, mm -hmm. and caffeine changes the tissue of breast of breasts, mm -hmm. increasing your risk for fibrocystic breast disease. So I decided that I was going to use carob instead, mm. but in here I put the carob and macadamia nuts. Mm. So that's those cookies. What we have right here are things that I just absolutely love. Um, two meatballs that are made from soy meat products. Mm. One is flavored in a barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. and the other is in a cranberry chili sauce. Okay, so the cranberry chili definitely caught my attention. Okay. And I'm all over the place here with this, so I'm just going to... See if I can find some. Yeah, that one caught my attention for sure. That looks like the barbecue one, actually. This okay, so that must cranberry. be the cranberry yeah, chili. Yeah, the one with the cranberry oh, in it. Oh, yeah, that looks... Well, let me have one of each. I don't know. Well, okay. Or Let's two and then here. one. Let's go two and one. <laughs> okay. And this is the barbecue one. All right. By the way, that again, tell me what that is. This is just a cranberry salad. Wow. Like it? Wow. You could probably also add mandarin oranges to it if oh, you wanted to. Oh, the mandarin oranges would probably jump for sure. And then the cranberry relish that's on here, I made from scratch using fresh cranberries. Put them in a pot with, traditionally you do sugar. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is to use frozen orange juice or frozen grape raspberry or grape juice. You put it in the pot with the cranberries, cook it bring to a boil, let it simmer, and it just keeps bubbling and popping. Wow. And when they stop popping, you have homemade fresh cranberry sauce. Mm. And so for people who don't want to use the can with all the sugar, you can make your own and add it to this relish or with this if you like. Then here we have a cheese sauce that I've also put salsa and some veggie burger in. All right, you're not allergic to nuts. Mm -mm. Okay, this is made from cashews. Get you a couple of those chips there. Sure. It's your hands go right on. It's just you and me. <laughs> and this is one, ones. when I did community service, I would go out into the community and sample this, and the people would stand there and ask, literally, could they have the pot to scrape the pot? Because it's kind of like the Rotel, oh. except you make it yourself, so you control what's in it. And, of course, all nuts have been linked to improvement of heart disease. And if you're using this with cashews, that's going to help your heart. If, however, you're allergic to nuts, you can make a white sauce using flour and water or flour and milk to avoid the nuts and then add all the other seasoning with it as well. And it'll still be just as tasty. Oh, yeah, because mm -hmm. that's the thing. You mm -hmm. want it to taste good. And mm -hmm. then I put salsa and veggie burger in there. This right here I learned how to make 30 years ago. I can't even believe I'm saying it. When I was working <laughs> as an extension agent in Georgia, mm -hmm. and they just take a loaf of bread, carve out the center, and this is just that famous spinach dip. But the spinach dip calls for mayonnaise and sour cream, mm. both of which are dairy products, which I don't eat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people of color are allergic to them. Mm -hmm. And anyone who wants to improve their health and wants to reduce the consumption of cholesterol, you don't want to do that. So I made it with a non-dairy version of mayonnaise and sour cream. And it tastes just as wonderful. I'm going to have to have some of that because spinach dip is one of my favorites. And um, sometimes for the holidays, I'll actually make it with the artichoke in it, too. Mm -hmm. Like what you get at the mm -hmm. restaurant. Mm -hmm. If you want to dip it with a piece of bread, you can. Mm -hmm. And um, heat it in the oven, melt some non-dairy cheese on top. I did it one year, and my son was like, Ma, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good. This next dish is my husband's absolute favorite. He was having a party when I was making this for the show, and he decided he was going to take some to his party. Mm. So we made a double batch of it. Mm -hmm. um, we call it Texas caviar, mm. high in fiber, excellent for diabetics because of the beans. There's a lot of information about the fact that carbs can mess with your blood sugars, but beans are one of the best foods to eat to control your blood sugars. So what we have in here is um, pinto beans, black eyed peas, black beans, corn, all kinds of bell peppers and onions, tomatoes, and then I seasoned it with Italian salad dressing and some uh, Mexican seasoning and some cilantro and a little salt. And it's absolutely delicious. And this is, this probably takes how long to make? As long as it takes to open up the can. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty simple. Very, my husband made it. Yeah. Yeah. It comes pretty fast, so I'm going to grab a little bit of that. Yeah. Because that looks good. It's his favorite, but I believe it's my favorite, too. <laughs> so actually, I'm going to get two scoops of that. And you've got some really good-looking things down here. I suspect those might be like a dessert type of thing. Yeah. Um, I do these for a mutual colleague of ours, Mango Coconut, and I decided for the holiday I would make them and I put a little eggnog in them. Mm. Now, I don't know if people like eggnog or not, so I don't know that I would say that it was eggnog, 
to a lot of people, or I would say that it was holiday spice. Ah. Because people, as soon as you say eggnog, people think something. Mm -hmm. But the holiday spice flavor, and this is actually what I use, a plant-based version of eggnog mm. that doesn't have the harmful effects in it that affect disease, and that's what that is. I've heard All of vegan, of course, no eggs, no milk, no butter, none of that sort of thing. These are a big hit, I think, because I've heard about the mango coconut. Mm. I've heard people talking about it before. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to having my first taste. Yeah of the mango coconut. Yeah, we got much more Gotta coconut. ask you, and we're gonna actually, while you're kind of talking a little bit about summarizing this whole process, okay. someone is thinking about the holidays, mm -hmm. and they're thinking that this is a good time to really begin being more conscientious about their eating. Mm -hmm. Give us maybe the top three things that they wanna think about in terms of preparation. Okay. If you're going to a party or hosting a party, always include something on the menu that is healthy. If you're going outside of your home to a party, eat before you go. Because sometimes you get there and you're eating fairly well. You're making the good choices of what you see, but you overeat. Mm -hmm. And overeating, even of good things, can be negative for you. Decide during the holidays, I'm not going to try and eat the most healthful things now. Mm -hmm. Because you will kick yourself in the head mm -hmm. trying to do it. Because it's illogical. We start in, in October with Halloween and it goes through New Year's where we're having office parties and this kind of party and the other party. And if you intend to start then, it's not going to be the easiest thing for you to do. Yeah. So just say, I'm not going to have alcohol. Okay. Or just say, I'm not going to do cheese. Or I'm going to do salads. I'll make sure that I have a salad every party that I go to. So do measurable things that people can have a success with. Right and not feel like they had this grand idea that just failed. Right, and then you feel like a failure once yeah. it's done, and then if you are already in a disease state, all of your lab indicators go crazy, and the doctor's screaming and everything, and it doesn't have to be that way. Oh, Donna, listen, we've had a great conversation here today. You bought some really good food. I'm gonna finish eating here in a little while. <laughs> okay. But we're gonna have a toast. Okay. It's the holiday season. Okay. And while you're telling people how they can get in touch with you, okay. we're gonna ask Blake to come on in come too. Come on, Blake. And then we're going to pour a drink for Blake, Blake, for Blake as, well. as well. And so we're just going to all have a little cup here of uh, a little something while I open it up. Okay. And uh, we'll make a toast for the new year. Okay. And to healthy eating. Okay, to healthy eating. That if you're good? interested in doing any of the things that we talked about here um, or getting in contact with me, you can visit my website, which is www.stillshoutin.com. You can email me, Donna at stillshouting.com. Many of the recipes that we share today are available in the books that I've written, Cooking Up Good Health Recipe Collection, as well as the book, Something to Shout About. Um, and then one other thing I probably would want to say is, if you can't access any of this information for whatever reason, go online and Google. Just go Google. And you can find so many amazing things. And if you decide, you know what? I want to make my meatballs this year, but I think I'm going to cut back on the amount of ground beef and I'm going to use some turkey. Or you're already eating turkey, I'm going to use turkey and have veggie burger. Or mm -hmm. if you're real adventurous, just make them all out of veggie burger. Mm -hmm. And when you really put a good sauce on it, nobody knows the difference and everybody's happy. And the key is making sure that you don't lose the taste. That's right. Got to taste good. I'll People... keep it at the house. What's the point? <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, What's the point? That's right. What's that's absolutely point? right. Well, here's your cup and okay. here's my cup. And Blake, if Blake will come on in, come I, on, I think Blake. Blake is going to come in and we're going to do a little toast. I think he's coming in. Is he talking? All right. He, he's going to join us in just a little while, but okay. we'll do a little toast okay. to the new year. And I want to thank you again for coming on the show. My Donna Green Goodman. My pleasure. Health educator extraordinaire. <laughs> number one cook that I know. <laughs> Nutrition, just anything you want to know. This is the person to ask again. How can people get in touch with you? Stillshouting.com. 256-379-5556. All right. All right. And I'm going to say, Blake, this is for yeah, you, this man. This is for you, Blake. This is, your, this is yours right here, Blake. Uh, again. Healthy New Year. To a healthy New Year. We hope that you'll have a great holiday season, and we hope that in the coming year, you'll make the kinds of choices and decisions about your life that will lead to an awesome 2015. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone.